Okay, so let's start this uh, lesson on the very simplest thing that we can do as in the hoop digitizing so that the whole thing is made in the hoop. Uh, this is going to be extremely simple. Uh, let's deal with the Tyson first and then I'll show you the materials you'll need to be able to stitch it out. So let's start off. I want to do this in my four inch hoop, okay? Because I don't, I, I'm just doing a square coaster. I'm not doing an elongated mug rug, which I could do a lot more with, but let's just start at the simplest of things a four inch coaster in a four inch hoop. Okay, so let's go to digitize. Pick up your rectangle. Now, what colour are we on? Well, uh, I know for me, I want that to be uh, blue. All right. So I'm picking up blue. I'll explain to you in a minute why. So I'll just draw a square. No matter how big it is, all right? It's a fill. I hit enter and enter again. It's a fill. And then I can pick that up over here and say, no, I want it outline, single run outline. Okay, single run outline. Then at the top here, you can see you've got controls. They're locked. So I'm going to unlock it because I'm going to say I want it to be four. I'm working in inches. I'm working in inches. I want it to be four by four. I want it to be a square. So now you see it's, and then now I can relock it. So now it stays at four by four, no matter what I do. So that's the very first instance of setting the size of our square. Right. So now we've got to think about it. And, and also now what I need to do, <laughs> as we do with everything, is go and collect the whole thing up, come down to layout, and auto center it to work area. So now we know it's absolutely in the middle. All right. Okay. Now, the way things work in the hoop, first off, uh, having, uh, in this case, uh, hooped up with a uh, wash away stabilizer, because we're going to need wash away stabilizer for this. I, the first stage, the first step is just with the hoop with stabilizer in it, nothing at all yet. I want it to sew that blue square, okay? Then I need it to stop so that having got that in my hoop, I know where I'm going to lay down the first bit of fabric. Now, the first bit of fabric is going to be either foam or uh batting okay so then we'll take that square duplicate it so i got two now but i'll change that to oh i don't know a, a red all right so now i got a blue they're exactly the same a blue and then i got a red if i come off it a blue and a red so that means that the blue is once it's sewn the blue color stop you can then lay down your batting or whatever you're going to use as your base fabric then it will go down on and stitch exactly the same thing again over your base fabric so that and then it'll stop before we do the next thing because we're going to do another color which will then allow you to cut back your batting to the size of that strip Okay, now that's not all we want to do, is it? Because now we need our base, you know, we got we, oh, so, for, so far we know where we're putting it, we know we're going to put batting over the top, we cut the batting back, all this will become clear to you, and then we want our base fabric that is going to cover exactly the same place. So we're going to duplicate that square one more time and give it a different colour. 
well, we can go back to blue now. We're not going to use blue, but we can go back to blue now because it's a colour stop. So now we got three. Starting at the top, that's the area in which we're working. That's going to uh, hold down your batting. You're going to cut the batting back to the stitch. Then this, then you're going to lay your, your base fabric over the top. And that is going to pin down your base fabric. Okay, so far? Notice this time uh, I got rid of my green background. Well, I've just turned it off. And I put the grid up because uh, I, the grid will help me in, until I get fed up with it. Right? But the other thing I've not shown you now, which is something I am going to show you, uh, on the, uh, this is the centre. We've now got laid down, our, uh, mine's going to be white, my white fabric, okay? But I want to border it. I want a half inch border all the way around in other fabric, okay? So I'm going to border this. So what I'm going to do, uh, can you see up here I've got the ruler up, yeah? If I click half an inch from the edge, that brings up a line. That's half inch. I can do it from this edge as well. Half inch. And <clears throat> from the side, I got my rulers up. You may need to, uh, if you don't know how to put your rulers up, go your show and make sure you've got your isn't rulers in show template oh, i don't know what template grid i got that up anyway take it off i put back on uh oh yeah next to it i'm so sorry you see next to it i got a uh, show rulers and guides yeah so what i've just done um is put up half inch lines to guide me yeah so starting uh at the bottom i can now go to digitize uh again i'm going to use and now i'm going to start to use a color that i want to use but this is going to be an open shape which means it's a line basically a line yeah and then from i'll go just outside and if i hold down shift on my keyboard it'll keep my line nice and straight and hit enter that's more oh, that's navy blue I don't want navy blue I actually, uh, I'm going to pick that up because I want it now. I know I'm going to use a goldy type material, so I want it in a goldy colour, all right? Uh, and I'm going to do exactly the same, or I could just duplicate that. Yeah, there it is. It's on top of the other, so I could just pick it up. See what I'm doing? Pick it up and bring it down to the other line. Yeah, that's a lot quicker, wasn't it? Then, having those two are sewn first, then from the top of this, this one, again, it's an open shape uh, and in that goldy colour, yeah. Then we have a gold, oh, so it's open shape in that goldy colour. Why won't you let me do it, you little sod? Right, let me save this. Save, saving as uh, 2001 uh, embroidery, embroidery tips. I'm going to put it under there, I think. Uh, I shouldn't do it under here. I should do it under level, really, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's do it under, I don't want crafty zoos. Documents. Otherwise, I'm going to get confused with where I'm putting things. So let me just stick it under. Oh, I know I'm here somewhere. Uh, love block design, yeah. And uh, I'm going to call. I'm going to make a folder, and I'm going to call it uh, coaster. All right. 
I don't even think I s Cooter. Oh, get back. Right click it. Rename. It's opposite. I can't spell. Right, coaster. Right, click coaster. And I'm, what am I going to call this? I, I'm going to just call it uh, just DR coaster so I know what it is. Right. So I've just saved it. Now I've saved it. Now, will you, my little darling, open shape, pick the gold that I want. No, you wouldn't. I did have to, you see, I've got the golden corner now. I did have to close it down, open it back up. Now it's doing what I want it to do. This is just because I've got so much running on, on, a, on a, a small computer. So this place, open shape, I've got the gold. So I'm going to do exactly the same, just starting just above that line. Holding down shift so that my line stays nice and straight. Dropping it and hitting enter. Yeah, then again, I am just going to go over here and duplicate it. So I've got two now, one sat on top of the other, and I can just whiz it across. Let it go. And say, well, yeah, oh, move it up a teeny bit. I say, yay, that's it. I got it. Okay, click off it. So now I got uh, four lines that is my border all right quick insertion here because when i came to actually stitch it i realized i made a mistake uh we've now done the the last thing we did was these four lines that were on our uh we we i gotta go back to us Right, that we did on our half inch lines all the way around, which is going to help, going to sew down our uh, border fabric. But what I what I forgot, which I've just realised now because I just come to stitch it out, was obviously these are placement lines, <laughs> so that you know where to put your fabric. Okay. So what I need to do is take the first one and duplicate it. Now I know this is going to go to the bottom. So I need to go to the bottom because obviously I've done far more since, but I'll take you back. I am putting this inside, right? So under one is another, yeah? Which I need to change colour so it becomes a stop. So I'm going to change it to being, oh, I don't know, burgundy, yeah? And then the next one, I am going to duplicate that, go to the bottom, find it, bring it all the way back up to where I want it to be. I'm so sorry about this. Come on, move, you sod. Right. And put it underneath the goldy one and change that to burgundy. All right. Oh, we're not going to change colours, but it's a stop. Yeah. Uh, the same with this. Duplicate, oh, check it, duplicate it twice. Uh, no, I can't because it's in a different place. Move down and duplicate the second one. So now I got to, I can take, I only want one at the moment. I want the top one to go underneath the top vertical one. If you can hold with me. I didn't think I did that. I'm going to go and do that again. No, I didn't, did I? Get hold of that. Bring it all the way back up after everything else we've done and say it needs to go under the top one above it and change that to burgundy so it's a colour stop and then again the last one pick that up and bring that all the way back up again so everything else we've done oh come on and lay that under the one above it and change that to burgundy so we've got and the only reason i'm changing is because we, that makes it a color stop for you to do something and this was something i forgot to do in the first place uh because one line is your marker where you're going to put your fabric and the next line is the actual stitch down okay so uh, i'm very very sorry about that and i'm sure it will become to clear clear to you at the end of the day now when it comes to and we're 
going to physically sew this out. What that will mean is uh, that you will put your fabric facing downwards, a quarter of an inch above that, sew that line, and then lift it up and over to the top, all right? Okay. So now, having done all that, I need to duplicate this one, which comes at the bottom, which, having done the work, and we folded it all back and it's in the right place. Now we want a stitch to go round to hold down the outside, which we can then trim to that shape again, okay? Trim into that shape again. It will become clear when you see it actually stitch out. Now the next thing for us to do is to, take, we need a design, don't we? We need a design to fit in the middle. Now it could be anything. It could be a Gemini symbol. It could be a, a, whatever. It could be a Christmas tree. It could, it could be whatever takes your fancy. We just need some sort of picture to digitize or go to your own uh, designs that are within your machine. Okay. Ooh, quilting embroidery, horizon link. No, I'm in the wrong bit there. Let's go to embroidery album, all right? And, oh, I've got hundreds of bloody things here. Let me just pick something, because literally, you can pick whatever you like that's already been digitised for you. Yeah? Copy that. You know, go to your own... Your own library, which I know you have, and... Uh, Pick something that suits you. Oh, I just want it to be, for mine, I don't want it to be too huge, uh, too too much stitching, but I don't mind. So I, I'm, gonna, I'm just, you know, looking through my, this is, I did this before when somebody put Emma on a, uh, an apron I made her. Um, oh, look, it's a trout or a fish for our ringy. Go to your own thing and say, well, oh. Well, do you know what? Well, that's probably too much. I'm coming up now. I'm taking a, a oh, I did a campfire. Um, I did a lovely mug rug for my dad with using that. Uh, oh, cat's arse, don't want to. <laughs> Celtic knot, I could do that's very, very easy. I think actually I'm going to go with a cupcake. As you can see, some of these are mine that I've done before, right? So I'm going to pick a cupcake, yeah? Open that up and that will bring it in to my uh, digitizer, all right? Well, actually, that's quite a nice size. Uh, but I am going to draw a line around it to select all, yeah? And then holding down my shift key, which keeps everything in proportion, I am going to actually just make that a little bigger. Right, I've just, I've just made it a little bigger, all right? So I'm going to do mine. As I said, i got yellowy borders to go on. So, yeah, I'm just going to put that cupcake in there. You could, as I say, you could design your own, use your own, but for ease of just teaching you the method of in-the-hoop uh, embroidery, i just pick in a ready-made one. So that, that's how we go. So we've got all of you now. All these have come in. You see, there's quite a lot of involved stitching, but it doesn't matter. You might choose something a bit simpler. doesn't matter to me. You do what you want, Okay. Uh, so now the next thing is, uh, in some ways, we've finished off, because remember this is material folded back, we've trimmed it back to the edge. Now we've put on our centrepiece that we wanted. So the next thing we need to do, yeah, is we need some sort of backing to this, because obviously uh, we want a colour or something on the back of this coaster for when you turn it over. Yeah, now, 
we're not going to put it on top but we need to do the stitching on top so yet again i'm going to go back up to this blue which is our outline and duplicate that again which should come up now right at the bottom okay which is a color stop after all the embroidery which means that when the embroidery is finished it's going to stop so we can do something and what we are actually going to do is take this this hoop out of the hoop arm turn it over and using some i well you know i use some um painter's tape or freezer tape paper tape and i am going to then set a tape what i want underneath on the back of the hoop okay then put the hoop back in under exactly where it was do this outside line again yeah then take the hoop back out and cut on the back side that piece that we've just added i am going to trim that back to that square okay so then i'm going to put the hoop back under yeah so i've got the trip the back is trimmed now as well and uh i'm ready to go with our basically our top stitch well again i will pick up this duplicate it and immediately change color i'm going to go with this uh goldy color again has it changed to that goldy color yes it has and then i can take i've still got this line um highlighted i can say i want this to be satin okay see now boom oh it's gone it's blue i want it to be that gold yeah so now this is highlighted as a satin stitch okay but uh, I am looking at, uh, I got this highlighted, so I'm looking at how big it is. And I want to just check something a moment because it has to be big enough to be purposeful. Okay, so I'm just getting down something else that I can quickly measure to make sure that I am correct in saying what I'm about to say. And I'm working in inches. Probably now is the time to work in millimetres, but I'm working in inches, so it is. What's that? One, two, four. Mm. It's half a centimetre. It's point five centimeters wide okay all right so now <laughs> clicked off of everything let's click off of everything i'm going up to my us and i'm going to metric now okay because and then i'm picking up my gold again coming over here now i'm working in metric and i want the width of this to be five millimeters see how that just got much bigger Okay, I want that to be five millimeters. Okay, so that's that's laying down <coughs> the outside satin stitch, but uh, I don't like to leave satin stitch raw, so I am now going to duplicate that again, pick that up, and I know it's that's five millimeters wide. Uh, so not a zigzag i'm going to go for a motif stitch uh in my m gallery yeah oh obviously i don't want that one in my m gallery pick up my m gallery i just want like a star stitch to be honest i do or a crisscross stitch i don't want anything heavy i just want something very light that'll just do it for me uh what do i usually use i can't remember Oh, that'll do let's pick that one up all right so now can you see on our picture i've got a line that is going through that uh satin stitch and i'm going to tell that to be five wide okay and i might say uh where else can i tell it 
Ike. Yeah, that's about it. But can you see, I am now going to run over the top of that. Let me make it really big so you can see, yeah? I'm making it really big so you can see that I am putting down almost a holding stitch over the top of the satin, which then will not allow the satin to uh, fray. Yeah, why is my show come up now? I got the work it. I don't want to work area. Right, okay. Uh and go to select. So we're back to normal. Put it back as normal, okay? Uh my grid's gone, but it doesn't matter now. So uh yeah, so I so as I said to you, bringing that up nice and big, you can see just collect it again and make sure I'm right five by five. I not care about the spacing, but it is five millimeters. So that is going to encompass our satin stitch. Now that's the last thing. Having done that, that's the last thing. That's it done. Having done that, then uh, remembering that all around this item that we've just done is uh, our wash away stabilizer. Yeah. So then we can. Cut it out of the hoop and get rid of any excess uh, stabiliser. All right. So let me just press naught to get you back in the bit. So this is, you're going to end up with, uh, you have to remember when you're stitching it out, that obviously, uh, because this, this, you turn it over and you can see the back, that when you do this outside line in, um, yellow you also need to put yellow in your bobbin because you otherwise you're going to have white on the back of this and it's better to have it finished all off in yellow isn't it so that's all the other thing i was going to say to you so that is basically it that's it um digitized so again uh i am just going to save that that's it done um and now file um Well, I can export it to my thumbnail and the next part is showing you, physically showing you how to stitch it out. All right, now part two of this is going to be physically sewing it out and me showing you how you go through each stage so that it makes it more clear to you the stages we just set down in our digitising sequence. I hope you're going to join me.